Hello, I'm Alex Borman and welcome to this video where we're thinking about how we can um, engage with our students um, to teach them with different demonstrations. Um, in a previous video we talked about engaging students with Lego and um, practical physical demonstrations. Um, now in this session we're talking about how you might engage students with a virtual demonstration. The example I'm going to use is um, some of my engineering teaching and how we can engage students um, using video games. Why are we thinking of things like video games? Because they're um, virtual environments that students can all be have the same level of familiarity with. Um, so maybe they've played these games before, maybe they've had no experience, but they can all you, you can introduce them all to a new game, possibly one of your creation if you are in that way talented. Um, I am not, so I'm going to demonstrate um, using a little bit of Sonic the Hedgehog. So here we have um, my version of me playing um, Sonic the Hedgehog um, as Sonic the Hedgehog, the character. That's important in a moment. Um, it's not the best run of the level, but it just gives you an idea of some of the principles we could introduce. So we start off from, from rest, so we can introduce things like Suva, Acceleration, we can see he's jumping around a lot. We can talk about things like um, energy transfers, um, so potential to kinetic energy. We could talk about parabolic motion. Um, we can see down here at the bottom of the screen, now just gone off the screen, there's a, a little red spring. So what does that red spring do? Again, we could talk about spring forces, spring constants. Um, we can talk about energy transfers again. Um, it, the, just off to the left now, you can see there's a yellow spring. We'll come back to that. Those stars around him, how does that change the character's dynamics? Um, as he tries to run up the, um, the steep incline, what's the different, um, what's the change in momentum that's taking place there? Um, and as he's jumping on that yellow spring, how is that different to the red one? Is it a different spring constant, a different energy conversion is taking place? He's just gone around and loop the loop. So we've got, again, this idea of um, different... Um, coordinate systems we could introduce so it could be um, normal tangential coordinate systems rather than the Cartesian ones that maybe students are used to. Here we can see a big long run where he's running across an almost flat surface a straight bit so you know what's the acceleration taking place there and then we're about to see two loop loops in a row again you could talk about changing momentum you could talk about um, the, the spring combinations here, how's that accelerating him, the change in height and the energy conversions again. So there's all sorts of different examples. You wouldn't necessarily throw them all in in one go, but there's all sorts of different examples that you might take from this, this one idea of teaching with video games. And you might get the students to pull out some ideas for themselves as well. By using video games, there's all sorts of different aspects we can introduce and there's all sorts of different questions we can introduce in the students' minds. So we could take that level and we could say, OK, what happens if it's icy, for instance? How does that change the whole dynamics, the whole um, operation? You know, just in terms of playability, how's that going to impact on your time? If you did everything the same, what would happen to the time of the run? Would it increase or decrease and why? Um, so you can think about that. You could also think about the um, the character involved. So the different characters in the game, I'm thinking Sonic specifically now, but it, it's the same for most games. The different characters are programmed to behave in slightly different ways. So if you've played Sonic and you recognise the Knuckles character versus Sonic, you recognise Knuckles can, can glide where Sonic cannot. So th there's different movement patterns, different dynamics in there depending on who you choose to play as. There's also some really good websites. Um, so when I post this video, I'll also put um, a link to my website and a link to some of the other um, websites that talk about the dynamics of that Sonic game in particular. But other games out there are also very useful um, in, for, for demonstrating different ideas. Once you've got the students to, to you know, engage with that sort of thinking, maybe they could design their own game. Or they could describe, not necessarily on a computer, but you know, sketch it out. What would it look like? Um, so there's all sorts of different things that you could get students to do that are engaging them. The demonstration pieces, they don't have to be practical, physical. They're virtual demonstrations. But it's tagging on to something that they're potentially familiar with 
um, from previous experience. So they're enthused because they're thinking about the same equations, the same concepts, but they're applying it in a slightly different way that they can all be familiar with from, you know, from a, a very common starting point. And that's particularly useful, especially lower down um, in first year, um, maybe second year, where um, you don't necessarily know all the different backgrounds of students and you want to pick them all up from the same starting point. Something like a, a computer game or, or the practical example that was given in the previous video. Um, they're, they're, they're good starting points that, that give a nice common baseline where all students can build from and they are infused by. Hopefully that's given you some ideas for your teaching. Um, do hit subscribe if you're interested in seeing other things that I'm doing and, and posting over the coming weeks, months and years. Um, and if that was useful and you try some of this and um, it works really well with your students, it'd be great to hear comments in the chat to, to, to hear how you used it, to hear what students thought of it. Because it's always good to hear from, um, you know, from colleagues and, and from students to, to hear how they're doing, what sort of things they're doing and how it's benefited them. Thank you very much.